Hello. I'm here today in a physical form. I'm with you in person, like those of you in the audience are. But in five, ten years from now, half of us might be here digitally. That's how much we don't know. And that's what I'm interested in defining. I look at this as a digital frontier. It's uncharted territory that we are bringing to sign language. How do we design sign language into a learning experience digitally? I have a passion for storytelling, which I bring to my work in American Sign Language. For non-signers, when you first see sign language, you may be impressed by its beauty, just in how it looks, and it is pretty, but it's a language, which means it has complex layers of various features, like hand shape, orientation, which can be combined in rhythmic ways to create patterns to make art with our language, making literature from ASL or other sign languages, documenting our experiences through technology. I work at the Motion Light Lab, which is a lab within Gallaudet University, which is the only university in the world that was established for deaf and hard of hearing people, meaning that on campus we use sign language. And this allows us to take together creative literature, storytelling, and combine it with technology to create new knowledge. Part of why this is so important is not only because it incorporates the deaf community's perspective, but the deaf community does not have a written form for our sign languages. And this technology enables us to document and learn more about the learning process through the visual modality, which will ultimately benefit all of humanity. So what we learn by looking at deaf people can benefit the world. The way that I design is to, be, is to make things not only accessible, which is what people usually initially think when they think about deaf populations, we design in such a way that access is universal. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, I like to revolutionize learning tools. As a storyteller in the digital medium, I've created storybook apps, not only for deaf children, but for all children to access. These are available on touchscreen tablets, and we bring together a visual language and text on one page, on one interface. This is a revolutionized reading tool. I'll show you a video of what these apps look like. The center I work within is called VL2, and this center is a research center that wants to understand what it means to learn through the eye in a visual modality. Their research on bilingualism is, has tremendous importance for all bilinguals. For deaf children in particular, their first or native language is ASL, and they ultimately do learn to read in English though. So how can their families give them access to various types of language? When we make these storybook apps, we don't just translate stories from English, but we make them natively in American Sign Language. We work with the storyteller to create a completely seamless experience built into these storybook apps. What we understand about reading has typically just been text-based. Even deaf people's experience with reading is, is only through text. But now that we have a way to capture sign language and retain it digitally, also able to make it interactive, this can have tremendous impact for deaf children. Not only have we developed these apps, we also made the template that we made them on available for people so that they can make their own types of digital literature enhancing the breadth of our library of ASL resources or sign language resources and other sign languages. This is called the Storybook Creator, and this enables people to document their sign language. This is by no means the end, but rather just the very beginning of expanding our literature in ASL. This is an image that I have from our motion capture lab at ML2. 
Motion capture is allowing us to map this uncharted territory, this new landscape. We know that ASL is 3D, and by using motion capture, we can preserve the language in a 3D format, which is much closer to the way in which it's initially experienced. I'll show you why this is so critically important. This is important because of kids like her. Meet Lucy. She's eight months old. She's deaf. And her window to the world is her eyes. Her parents set up the iPad near her, and she's so engaged in these stories. When a baby is born, if they're hearing, then parents make sure to provide a linguistically rich and a very stimulating environment through all kinds of sounds and toys, mobiles that have sound with them. Where do deaf children get that sort of input? Where do they get their language from if their parents aren't deaf as well? This is at the heart of my passion, to make sure that everyone learns sign language so that you can connect with whoever you might come across. What you can see Lucy doing with her hands here is actually babbling. She's not just moving her hands, but she's actually babbling and trying to create language. Part of what we work on in ML2 is creating nursery rhymes through motion capture. Nursery rhymes are so very important, as you know from your own experience hearing nursery rhymes in English. These are parts of the foundations that help you remember language, learn your language. But if you just translate them from English into ASL, they don't rhyme. And it ultimately just becomes gibberish. It doesn't have the same function of helping children develop their memory in terms of learning the language and developing their memory for what would come next. What we would do instead is have nursery rhymes that, are, that rhyme in ASL. So you can see patterns when those features that I mentioned earlier are repeated. What you're seeing here on the left side of the screen is someone talking about a boat resting on waves. And you can see the repeated movements. This would serve as a foundation or a platform for rich linguistic input for a baby. You can also, with this technology, rotate the perspective so that you take on not only the viewer perspective, but the signer's perspective. And that is the perspective that makes me really excited, that you can use this technology to see what it's like if you were the signer. This is the same story of a person talking about a boat being on the waves. The yellow dots, yellow greenish dots, are their hands. This in and of itself becomes a true art form. You can see the patterns in the movements. Now, at the beginning, I said that I might be here in a digital format in five or 10 years, but I wasn't really kidding about that. I already have an avatar version of myself. Part of why an avatar is so important is because it allows for interactivity. You can assign various behaviors. You can have the avatar interact in a 3D world with VR and augmented reality. We can preserve sign language in various ways to use them in educational tools. The possibilities are truly endless. And this is the frontier at which we find ourselves. The challenge traditionally with avatars, which may be familiar to you all, can be likened to hearing an electronic voice. You can tell instantly whether a voice is computer generated, artificial, or if it's human. The same goes for those of us who are watching avatars signing. It looks utterly mechanical, and it's not fluent. We are pushing the frontiers of how avatars move by including fluent signing. I'll show you one example of what we've accomplished so far, which is really exciting. It's a story called My Three Animals, which is one of the nursery rhymes we've created. We captured the storyteller in motion capture. When signers see these videos, they're impressed by the authenticity of the avatar's movements. When you take a look at the video, try to keep an eye out for the repeated movements and in the avatar's hand shapes. This is a nursery rhyme about 
his three animals, which won't rhyme in English, but it rhymes in ASL. Right now he's talking about his dog barking, his cat looking at him, and his bird singing. He repeats the activities of the animals three times over, that they beg, 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 and that he feeds them, feeds them, feeds them. He's recounting now on a Saturday, in, one Saturday in particular, when the dog wouldn't stop barking, the cat wouldn't stop staring, the bird wouldn't stop singing until they all got fed. And then he repeats again, but I live with three animals. I chose to live with them, my cat, my dog, and my bird, and that's who we are. So this is just our very first step into making nursery rhymes in ASL with avatars. This very rich information has been stored in the deaf community traditionally because we didn't have a way of documenting it. The first known person to have mentioned sign language in a book was in 1779. Pierre de Loger said, I cannot understand how a language like sign language, the richest in expressions, the most energetic, the most incalculably advantageous in its universal intelligibility is still so neglected that only the deaf speak it. Deaf speak it. That is, confess, one of those irrationalities of the human mind that I cannot explain. One of the greatest questions that I think about is how to take this very rich body of information and literature that exists person to person in the deaf community and how to connect us as people who do and don't sign. So for that, I present to you the ASL app. I work with a team that created an app that is interactive, that enables you to learn ASL from your mobile device so you can learn ASL on the go as a way of trying to connect people and create inter interactions between communities. I think that this enables the future and this is another aspect of that frontier that will bring us to new knowledge, new learning, that will satisfy some of our curiosities about perceiving the world. And this is one way to make those connections. My work aims at exploring ways to make connections happen. How we can use technology to create community. Again, this brings me back to the fact that we are at the beginning of a new frontier, both digitally and societally. Where do we want to see ourselves in the years to come? It's important that we have a diverse range of perspectives and that we can create one large community in which we all understand what it really is that makes us human. Thank you.